28. Verify ECS reduced for launch. Verify. 25. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go SES. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying SES 20 and 21 for SES, the leading provider of global content connectivity solutions. After 15 seconds of flight, the EU has gone close with control. Jesse Gonzalez providing launch vehicle ascent data. And 40 seconds on the play. Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And the vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. And the RD-180 is now throttling back up as expected. Engine response continues to look good. Passing a minute into flight, continuing to see uh, good SRB chamber pressures. Uh, RD-180 pump speed and fuel injector pressures are uh, responding well to demands on the engine. Vehicle is continuing right down the middle of the range track. three SRBs. Standing by for SRB jettison in about 20 seconds. And we have good jettison of all three SRBs. And the vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. And the RD-180 is throttled down as expected. Engine response continues to look good. About two minutes remaining in the boost phase of flight. Uh, the vehicle is now 45 miles in altitude, uh, 70 miles downrange, traveling at 5,500 miles per hour. Passing three minutes into flight, the uh, RD-180 is throttling down again, as expected. Engine response continues to look good, and the RCS system is now pressurizing to flight levels. And about one minute remaining in the boost phase of flight. And we've had good indication of payload fairing jettison and Centaur forward load reactor jettison. And the RD-180 is now uh, throttling up as expected. Engine response continues to look good. And the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6 G acceleration limit. And Centaur has begun the uh, boost phase chill down sequence to thermally condition the RL10 for operation. Standing by for BECO shortly. And we've got BECO booster engine cutoff. And we've had Atlas Centaur separation. And 
seeing good uh, pre-start on the RL-10. Standing by for MES-1 shortly. And we have ignition for the first burn of today's mission. Uh, this will be the first of three Centaur burns for today's mission. It will last a little over seven minutes. RL-10 uh, operating parameters and vehicle body rates are looking good in the first part of the burn. Uh, vehicle continues down the middle of the range track now at uh, 120 miles in altitude, um, 500 miles downrange, traveling at uh, about 13,000 miles per hour. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes 45 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Jesse Gonzalez confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, Centaur Main Engine Cutoff, will occur in about seven minutes. During this time I have the pleasure of welcoming during this time I have the pleasure of welcoming ULA's commercial program director, Vernon Thorpe. Thanks for joining us, Vern. Thanks, Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here. Cool. So we just lifted off on a long ascent to orbit. What should we expect to happen over the next six hours? Okay, well, we just saw the, uh, the initial booster ascent phase, so now what we're going to do is three Centaur burns uh, to complete this mission. Uh, the first burn is happening right now, of course. That'll last about seven and a half minutes. Uh, when that is complete, we'll enter a 12-minute uh, park, er, parking orbit coast, and then we'll have a second Centaur burn. That Centaur burn will last about five minutes. And that will place us into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. So the, uh, the highest point of that orbit will be up at geosynchronous altitude. So after five hours, when we're at the top uh, of that elliptical orbit, we will do another Centaur burn. It'll be just over two minutes long, and that will essentially circularize uh, the mission. And at that point, we'll be very close to uh, a geosynchronous orbit. We'll take out most of the inclination during that burn as well, and we'll go from about 28 degrees down to about 1.9 degrees of inclination. Um, following that, we'll separate the satellites. We're going to separate the satellites 40 minutes uh, apart, and that'll be centered around the, the T plus 6 hour mark, so one about 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after that. Very nice. And why might a orbit matching Earth's rotation be necessary for for these satellites, SCS-20 and 21? Well, well, that's the advantage of a, of a geosynchronous orbit for many communication satellites. You know, at that altitude, the uh, time that it takes to do one orbit of the Earth matches the time it takes uh, for Earth to rotate once. So from an observer on the surface of the Earth, it looks like the satellite is stationary in the sky. So since you have that, that fixed uh, relative position, uh, that's very convenient. Uh, when the satellite needs to provide continuous communication coverage to uh, to antennas on the Earth. All right. So next question for you. Following separation from ULA Centaur, SES 20 and 21 will be operational fairly quickly. What more can you tell us about that? Well, they'll be operational very quickly because of that near geosynchronous orbit that we're placing them into. A uh, typical GTO uh, type mission where the orbit, whether the spacecraft has to uh, do the orbit raising up to geosynchronous. For a satellite like this, for these two satellites, it would take about five to six months because they have electric propulsion systems, they're very low thrust systems, uh, so it takes a long time to achieve the final orbit. Um, with this mission today, we're going to put them almost uh, exactly where they need to be for their final operational orbit, so it cuts out most of that orbit raising time, and uh, it'll allow them to get both spacecraft, uh, SES to get both spacecraft operational about five months earlier than if we had flown a traditional GTL mission profile. Very nice. All right, so that leads to our Atlas rocket is quite a legacy of support to commercial satellite missions. Tell us a little more about some of the missions we've put in orbit. Sure. So uh, both Atlas and Delta, uh, the, the rockets we fly at ULA, have been launching commercial satellites since the early 1960s. 
Um, in fact, we launched what many consider to be the first true uh, commercial communication satellite, and that was the Telstar mission.